Hello, I am the new voice actor for the channel, as sadly my predecessor can no longer continue his work. I shall deliver the best voiceover I can and I hope you'll enjoy it. Probably everyone has heard about the dangers of radiation, but most of us think it's somewhere far away in Chernobyl. Unfortunately, the reality is quite different. And each day more than half of us experience radiation doses in our homes that negatively affect our health. Now let's take a look at where it comes from and how to defend ourselves against it. To begin with, we will take radiation measurements in my home. We ordered a device called a dosimeter. With it, we can measure the radiation levels. For example, we carried such a device with us when we filmed a video at Chernobyl. If you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. It was rather interesting. Each time the device encounters radiation, it emits a sound and a flash of a light bulb. And in my house, the indicator is within the norm so far. Let's measure the radiation of Stefan's cage. It's a little higher here, but still good. Next, we will measure Cookie. Also a good result. But friends, I can now show you that there is a lot of radiation in almost every house. We will take our mini vacuum cleaner and put a piece of cloth over it which we hold with a rubber band. Now with this vacuum cleaner, we need to vacuum some dust off of things in our apartment. After collecting some dust, leave the vacuum cleaner on on the couch to allow the air in the room to filter and accumulate all the particles inside the filter. After 15 minutes, we take out the filter and measure its contents. You know, the radiation level has multiplied. An alarm went off on the dosimeter, which says that there is a dangerous level of radiation. Even Cookie does not want to be next to this radiation source. So, how does it work? Where did the radiation come from? This is because there are deposits of underground uranium almost everywhere on our planet. It is a radioactive substance. Somewhere it's more noticeable than in other places. We don't know how it got there. Maybe long time ago a falling meteorite brought it here. So this uranium not only lies in the ground, but constantly releases a radioactive gas called radon, which penetrates upwards and enters the air. If it gets outside, it's fine, because there's a lot of clean air. It mixes with it and dissolves over time. But if the floor of your home stands in its way, it's a little problematic. The gas passes through the floor and enters the house, which is an enclosed space. In such conditions, the radiation accumulates very quickly to dangerous concentrations. You may think it's nothing but a scarecrow, and this gas really doesn't pose a threat. But the World Organization said that radon gas constantly irradiates our body, and is the second most common cause of lung cancer and other diseases right after smoking. But what should I do? Well, if you live in Africa and sleep on the street or in a tent, then everything is fine. Redden will not do anything to you. But if you live in your own home or apartment, then you need to ventilate your apartment as often as possible. Not only to ventilate this gas, but in general, fresh air will have a very positive effect on your health. Next, you need to examine the floor for cracks and try to cover them up with something, perhaps plasticine. After all, through the cracks in the floor, this gas penetrates into our homes. Those who live in blocks of flats are a little more fortunate when it comes to gas. Gas will mostly not reach the upper floors. But some of this gas still passes through the walls if they are made of poor quality materials. In many apartments, experiments showed large amounts of radiation. This was a short but still very useful video. I just wanted to share this information with you, so that you are aware of this danger and ventilate your home as often as possible.